Yeah, what does it tell you, the, the data, um, and in a way, the strength of this recovery? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, uh, tomorrow we will have the official uh, first quarter's GDP figure. Uh, so based on our forecast, I think the first quarter's GDP growth will be around 4%, which will beat the market expectation. So from the perspective of GDP breakdown, uh, I think consumption will finally become the major booster. So just like the market expected, uh, but especially for the consumer services spending. Uh, as for the investment side, I think the infrastructure investment growth will uh, remain robust, just like the February and January data. Uh, but the uh, decline of the property investment growth will continue to narrow. Um, I think uh, what I want to mention, uh, which is a very unique aspect, just like you guys said before, is the export growth. Uh, I think that in the first quarter, the next export uh, growth to, uh, will have a positive contribution yeah. to the overall GDP growth. Mm. Uh, because given that uh, the March export growth was around 14.8% year, which is a very strong number. Mm. So overall speaking, I think the first quarter's uh, China's GDP or economic growth transcript will be quite satisfied by the market. That was the bonus, as yeah. they say, because we didn't expect exports to pick <laughs> up that much. Do you think that continues, this boom in exports? What do you think was behind that big surprise? Yeah, I think... You know, especially in the second half, mm -hmm. uh, I think the United States will formally enter the recession. Mm -hmm. So I think this will hit the China's export growth, even though ASEAN growth is always uh, very robust. Mm -hmm. But the ASEAN only account for around 14 or 15 percent of the China's overall uh, export. Mm -hmm. uh, but the United States and Europe, uh, they account uh, around 30 or 35 percent in total. So this will send a you know, downside pressure of China's export especially in the second half. Hmm. Well, okay, that's, you know, you've got the expert side of things here as well, but are you seeing any signs of deglobalization hitting these numbers? Uh, you know, and uh, longer term, what do you see? Yeah, I think definitely the deglobalization will hit the, uh, uh, China's export. But the thing is, you know, we all know that China's manufacturing has the food departments over the world. This is the only country in the world. So we believe that China's manufacturing still have the ability to supply the world. But the thing is, we propose a lot of... Does it of supply? It? Does it also export disinflation? Uh, yeah. Yes, exactly. So I think... Um, but uh, we propose a lot of, you know, policies to uh, the, uh, you know, ASEAN country and, uh, and also Russia. So this will become the new driver to export growth in the future. Mm. But for the United States and Europe, uh, actually, I'm quite uh, negative on these. Given how low inflation is in China, is there a risk of deflation in China now? Uh, I don't think because from the economic uh, fundamental perspective, I, I don't think China is right now called deflation. But the thing is, I, I just want to say that China's inflation, headline inflation, has a down risk, downside risk. But I think in the second half, because of the low base, uh, I think the inflation, headline inflation will gradually elevate it.